珍しいですね僕とさんあれは高校終わっても変わらずバレエやるし高校最後の大会だからって今までと特に変わんないと思ってたんだけどやっぱもっとみんなとやりたかったな、はあ、何言ってるんですかまだ2日目じゃないですかまだ先は長いですよ In the world of volleyball, where every point can make or break dreams, the ace is a player who not only scores the most points, but is the one who his teammates can turn to in a moment of struggle. Or in the words of Kotaro Bokuto, the ace's back serves as an inspiration to their teammates. They smash every wall in their way, and they spike every ball. And in that sense, The force of nature that is Ushiwaka, the powerhouse Kiryu, or even the ever reliable Takeru Nakashima serve as the perfect examples for the title of Ace. And yet, the player who constantly reiterates the importance of the way of the Ace seems to be the one furthest from that title. Or at least, that's what I thought about Bokuto for a lot of Haikyuu. He's a larger than life character who's full of confidence and has the skills to match his exuberant personality. But despite all of these amazing traits, the last thing most people would describe Bokuto as is reliable. And there is some truth to that. Or at least, there was. From his first appearance in the Tokyo training camp to his performances at nationals and his life changing game against Muji Nazaka, this is the story of a man who learns what it means to truly. An ace. Bokuto bursts onto the scene at the Tokyo training camp as a whirlwind of energy with unmatched skill that immediately sets him apart from everyone else. With a flair for the dramatic and a knack for pulling off the impossible on the court, his presence is as undeniable as his talent, and his cut shots are a spectacle in their own right, inspiring awe and admiration, something Tanaka soon tries to master. Given his skill set, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Bokuto is one of the top five aces in the nation. But as we peel back the layers, we find a paradox that defines the early impressions of him. His larger than life persona masks his volatile nature. He's shown to be prone to dramatic shifts in mood that can turn the tide of a game for better or worse. And this juxtaposition paints a picture of a player who, despite his undeniable prowess, carries an air of unpredictability. And this isn't just a quirk, but a palpable tension that threads through his interactions on the court. His teammates and his opponents find themselves caught in the wake of Bokuto's highs and lows. The contrast between his moments of brilliance and his sudden lapses in confidence tells you all you need to know about him. He's not only unpredictable, but at times unreliable. But that's never been something that's bothered Fukuro Dani, because they're known to be every bit as strong without Bokuto as they are with him. So it's no surprise they're known as the team that carries the ace. Their setter, in particular, Akashi, is well accustomed to Bokuto's volatile tendencies and knows exactly what to do to bring him back into the game so their team can benefit from it. And while Bokuto's volatile mood isn't shown to negatively affect his team, that just isn't what an ace is supposed to be. In these early stages, Bokuto embodies the raw potential and inherent risks of relying on sheer talent alone. That isn't to say he's not hardworking, but It does mean his journey at the camp hints at a deeper struggle, a battle between the player he is and the player he aspires to be. And there's no better way to understand the kind of player Bokuto wants to be and the kind of legacy he wants to leave behind than his attachment to the way of the ace. For Bokuto, it's a philosophy that reveals much more than just a set of rules. It's not about being the best on the court, but about embodying an essence that uplifts everyone around him. And it's here the layers begin to peel back, showcasing a depth that goes beyond his incredible skills. Bokuto's infectious energy does more than just animate the crowd, it galvanizes his team, transforming the court into a stage where every player feels compelled to match his energy. And while Bokuto loves all the attention being on him, it isn't about hogging the spotlight at all. It's about making the game not just a competition, but a shared journey of highs and lows. His philosophy outlines a pivotal point. Being an ace extends beyond personal accolades. It's about becoming a beacon that others can rally around, 
especially in moments of uncertainty. While he may seem loud and obnoxious on the outside, there's so much more to Bokuto than just his larger-than-life personality. Yes, he can be selfish at times, but more often than not, that selfishness is the key that differentiates those aiming for the top and those happy with settling. And there is no doubt that Bokuto, more than anything, wants one thing, to be the best. He isn't an idiot. He's incredibly skilled and does far more than what the mantra of spike every ball may suggest. After all, he was the one who taught Hina to the beauty of tipping and the other ways a player can have fun on the court. He wears his heart on his sleeve and has never been afraid to show his passion, giving it his all in every situation. The issue here is that sometimes it's difficult to keep up with such a person, leaving Bokuto all alone. This is why the likes of Hinata and Kagiyama, and even the Mia twins are so lucky to have each other because no matter what, they'll always have someone to push them forward, someone who can keep up with them. But in Bokuto's case, he didn't have anyone like that. Nobody could keep up with his monstrous passion and ambitions. So instead, he used his old junior league coach's teachings to fuel him, a philosophy that meant he would always be able to keep pushing forward. Do what's fun, not what's easy. This isn't to say that when faced with adversity, one should look for the silver linings. Rather, it's a philosophy that means that sometimes, to be able to have the most fun, you may have to take the harder route. You can't keep doing the same things and expecting them to work because they're easy. After all, eventually you may end up running into a wall. Instead, you need to be able to take a breath, step back, reassess and learn something new to get over the wall that's in front of you because that's how you stay on the court to the longest. That's how you play the most volleyball and that's how you have the most fun. Bokuto isn't suggesting a disregard for discipline. Instead, he highlights a profound understanding that the essence of volleyball lies in embracing challenges. And this doesn't just apply to sport, but to life itself. It's about finding joy not in spite of difficulties, but because of them. And it's because of this that Bokuto is so driven at every aspect of volleyball, not just spiking. He needs to be good at digging, passing, blocking, reading the game, manipulating his opponents and even off-court aspects like keeping in peak physical shape. This mindset transforms every hurdle on the court into an opportunity for growth and an invitation to delve deeper into the game's nuances. And this philosophy culminates in Bokuto's journey through nationals. Being a player who is shown to crumble at the slightest adversity, it wouldn't be a surprise if Bokuto found the grand stage of nationals to be intimidating. But nothing could be further from the truth. Despite his flaws, Bokuto was never one to choose the easy route, and being able to perform on such a big stage in front of so many people only seemed to invigorate him, channeling his boundless energy into a focused beam of competitive spirit. That being said, Fukurodani could not have been off to a worse start. In their first match, Bokuto's mood swings start early, leaving even Akashi puzzled. It isn't like the team was performing poorly, and his opponents weren't particularly challenging Bokuto, certainly not to the degree he had experienced against Nekoma. So what was the problem? Perhaps there was no better way to showcase Bokuto's volatility than the fact that he was performing poorly because he was upset that his team were playing in the sub-arena, which meant he had fewer people watching him. As comedic as this may be, it's the last thing a team would want to hear from their ace. Fortunately, Akashi was quick to pick up on this. He tells Bokuto that while they may be in the sub-arena with fewer people, it only has one court, which means that everyone's eyes are on Bokuto, including Hinata's. Something that's easily missed here is that Bokuto considers Hinata to be his student, and by seeing him, he's reminded about what it means to be an ace. This revelation gives Bokuto the motivation he needs to perform at his best, and he pulls off one of the best cut shots in the series against a triple block. There's not much information on Fukurodani's next game other than the fact that it was a relatively routine win. But after this, there's a spine-chilling scene that occurs during a conversation between Bokuto and Akashi. Bokuto, being in his final year of high school, complains that he'll miss playing with his teammates, but Akashi is confused, asking Bokuto if he's dying. 
And this line provides amazing insight into not only Akashi's character, but the mindset of Fukuro Dani as a whole. Akashi is genuinely confused as to why Bokuto is going to miss him because in his mind, they still have a long way to go, quarterfinals, semifinals, and then the finals, and he doesn't doubt they'll win. And Bokuto's response to this is a spine-chilling statement that echoes Fukurodani's ideology. Fukurodani's next game against Muji Nazuka features a showdown against the nation's best aces, with Kiryu being part of the top three on par with Ushijima and Sakusa. This game is honestly one of the best games in Haikyuu and it's a shame that from the way things are shaping up with the two movies, it may get cut from the second film. But in any case, Muji Nazuka get off to a great start with their ace Kiryu Wakatsu having the ability to hit the ball from almost anywhere on the court without sacrificing much power or accuracy. And not only are they powerful offensively, but defensively they implement an anti-Bokuto strategy, with their blockers denying his line shots and the receivers being ready to dig up any cross shots. And things go from bad to worse, with the usually calm and collected Akashi beginning to panic as Muji Nazaka shuts down all his attacks, and Bokuto gets blocked repeatedly. This is the point where it's expected to happen. Through every game, while the pressure of the match may have never directly affected Bokuto, he was prone to weird mood swings that meant his team would have to carry him forward. So it was only natural that there would be a time when his teammates wouldn't be able to bail him out and he'd lose. But this wasn't that time. Kiryu smashes the ball in past Fukurodani's blockers and just when it looks like there'd be nobody there to receive it, Bokuto digs up Kiryu's spike with his chest, his proud back facing his teammates. And as Akashi sets the ball high, Bokuto jumps up, ready to smash it down. Muji Nazuka's blockers are already in position for a line shot, but that doesn't phase Bokuto as he squeezes in the tightest line possible. <laughs> And in the very next play, when the ball is sent up high for Bokuto once more, Muji Nazaka are back to stop him. Not only do they have blockers ready to stop his shot, but they also have receivers in position behind the block, completely shutting Bokuto out. But Bokuto is never one to do what's easy, and still manages to get off a tremendous cut shot. <laughs> The next few panels are perhaps some of the best in the entire Haikyuu manga, showcasing the culmination of one of the most beautiful journeys in the show. Bokuto tells his teammates that this entire time, he was only able to be the ace thanks to them. They not only tolerated his mood swings, but they supported him, nurtured him, and gave him the tools he needed to be able to become the ace. So now that he would have to say goodbye to them, it was time he became the team's ace with his own strength. At this point, Bokuto wasn't hesitating. He wasn't thinking that he wanted to score. He wasn't even hoping to score. He knew he would score because he was the ace and that was his responsibility. <laughs> With Bokuto playing better than he ever has, Fukurodani slowly gain back ground on Muji Nazaka, but narrowly lose the first set. But that doesn't matter, because Bokuto is still on fire, with his amazing plays hyping up the crowd, who in turn hype Bokuto up even more. The crowd chant his name as Bokuto earns his team point after point, with Fukurodani eventually taking back the second set. And the third set is where Bokuto really shines, using all that he's learned, every skill, every technique, every tactic to help his team. And his infectious energy not only rubs off on his own team, but also his opponents, with Kiryu also getting hyped up, ready to do what it takes to earn his team the victory. Bokuto even manages to hype up the ever pragmatic and calm Akashi into trying a back attack quick that not only they hadn't done before, but they hadn't even practiced. And with that, Fukurodani wins, earning a spot in the semi finals, all thanks to their ace. Kuro, でも、バレエが楽しいと思うようになったのは最近だ。燃える。その瞬間があるかないかだ。やっぱもっとみんなとやりたかったな。
の T シャツ超かっけえっすねへいへい見る目があるなひなた今年の春コーデ買ったんだよ俺も欲しいもしもその瞬間が来たら春コー行って買えばいい俺がお前がバレエにはまる瞬間だへいへいフォーワード。